Hey, what is up guys, Tava here, and cinema lenses can be expensive, like really, really expensive. So if you're a beginner filmmaker and you want to be getting into that cinema lens world by using bigger cameras and better ones without breaking the bank, there aren't a lot of good options, but one of those options is what I'm going to be talking about today. So this is the Mikey 16mm T2.2, and it's a really solid, sharp lens for about $350, which is a little less than the Rokinon lenses, which are the other ones kind of in the same price range. So just up front, this lens does have a mount for Micro Four Thirds, which means it's ideal for Lumix and Blackmagic cameras, but can't work with a lot of different cinema cameras, so you have to keep that in mind. It also only works up to APS-C size sensors for cameras, so another thing to keep in mind. But with that aside, this is a great sharp lens that gets you into that cinema world with all these features without being super expensive. So first up, the main things I like about this lens are the build quality itself. It's just a really solid, completely metal lens with really nice glass elements on the inside and just an overall phenomenal build quality that really feels like it can last a long time and under a lot of pressure, so that's always a really nice thing to see. Another thing on build quality that I like about this lens is that it isn't too big. A lot of cinema lenses can get very large in size, and because this is meant for micro four thirds, it's not too big of a lens, which means it's also slightly lighter, although with all the metal and glass it can get a bit heavy, but compared to other lenses it's not too bad. Again, this is a 16mm lens, so it's quite wide, but if you have it on a camera that's micro four thirds with the 2 times crop ratio like my Lumix G7, it turns out to be a 32mm lens, so a little bit more like a 35, but still pretty wide. And also the aperture is T2.2, which basically means an f2.0, so the T-stop is used for cinema lenses while the f-stop is used for photography lenses, so that's the little difference there. So with the lens, this is about all you'll get. It doesn't come with a lens hood or anything, but that's pretty usual for cinema lenses because you usually have a matte box in front of the camera to adapt with that. It's not the end of the world, but you can get some flares in the side since there's no protection around the outside of the lens. And then another thing is that the filter size is 77mm in case you want to get ND or polar filters for this lens. My main reason for liking this lens is how sharp it is compared to other cinema lenses in this price point. So like I said, compared to the Rokinon lenses, I found this one to be much sharper, even completely wide open at T2.2. And for me personally, that's a huge plus because it means I can shoot completely wide open at night without having blur around the edges and having a completely clear and in focus image, which is just a super nice thing to have with any lens. So I really like that about this one. Of course, like any cinema lens, it has really nice clear markings for focus that are accurate and can help you pull focus to different areas. This lens also has a really nice clickless aperture throw that goes from T2.2 to 22, as you can see here, and it's really smooth and allows you to change aperture really easily and nicely. The focus throw on this lens is nice as well, but it is a bit tighter than I would prefer. My only complaint with this is that sometimes it can be hard to pull from a subject that's close up to one far away quick enough because it is kind of tight. So you have to use a lot of momentum, which can kind of shake the camera. Not the worst thing in the world, but just something to keep in mind. I'm not sure if the focus pull will tighten or loosen over time, but if you have a focus pull system, it works just fine. And speaking of focus throw, it goes about 80% around the lens to get from the minimum 0.2 meters to infinity. So you have about 80% of the lens to go around to go the entire cycle. And on the lens it says the minimum focus distance is 0.67 feet, but I almost feel like sometimes I can get even a bit closer to that, so it's just interesting. So like I said before, my favorite thing about this lens is the image quality, and that should be the main priority for any lens because you're using it to capture images through the lens and into the sensor of your camera. So generally, you want it to look pretty crisp and good, and I think this lens does an excellent job at getting those shots done. Compared to some other cheaper cinema lenses, the chromatic aberration in this one is very minimal, if at all, and I think that helps to make the image look more expensive than it really is. Also, bokeh from this lens looks very clean and round in most circumstances, and I think it holds up very well compared to other lenses. So anyway, that's about it about this lens. I think it's a great overall workhorse and get pretty good shots considering the price point. And compared to other low-budget cinema lenses like the Rokinon series, which I've used, I believe that it has a cleaner and better image. So all that being said, here are some test shots using this lens on a Lumix G7, just keep in mind that the focal length will look like 32 millimeters on there because it's a two times crop ratio. So here are some test shots. Cause when love will trick you and 
to love and him the rich one we shall have found by you around the wise girl will teach you the ways of true love the thief will sneak through the flow will you still remember the name of this guy It's the deafening silence that follows and makes me feel lost. But one day we will soon to stop like a moon, grow this can work like a face on a spoon. I come and show what's in the city. There's a tramp quietly advancing around the camp, pushed by a demon that breathes down my. So, anyway, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.